Hi guys, the Metal Maniac back again, and in this video, I'm going to be doing a review of the album Goat Lord by the band Goat Lord. Um, this is um, a compilation album, really, and it contains their first ever demo from 1987 and one of their rehearsals from 1988. Um, this is a or this what this band was sort of a, a death metal, almost black metal fusion band. Uh, based in um, Las Vegas, and um, anyway, so this EP, uh, not EP, um, compilation album um, was released, um, honestly I don't know when this one was released, but um, the actual audio recordings, um, in terms of the a demo half were um, recorded in 1987, and like I said, they also have rehearsal recordings that were recorded in 1988. Um, anyway, so before I get into this, I'm going to name off the band members really quick. Um, on vocals, uh, the late, great uh, Ace Still on vocals. Um, unfortunately, Ace Still passed away a few years ago. Um, I think it was 2017. But uh, yeah, he was their first vocalist. Anyway, so yeah, Ace still on vocals. Uh, Joe Franklin on guitar, Jeff Nordone on drums, and Jeff Schwab on bass. Um. Okay, so the first half is the uh, eighty-seven demo. Uh, sorry, yeah, eighty-seven demo. Um, and the first song is called "Possessed Mutants of War." Uh, Possessed Mutants of War would actually be retitled later on as Possessed Soldiers of War. Um, mainly because they're, the line in the song is Possessed Soldiers of War, not Possessed Mutants of War. So, yeah, makes sense that, that they changed it. Anyway, yeah, so starts off really, really good with Possessed Mutants of War. Um, it has this very sort of, it starts off with this very chaotic sort of uh, intro riff that leads into the main riff, and the first half of the song is pretty wild and chaotic, and then when it hits the midpoint, uh, the song slows down a bit, and becomes this very sort of doomy, atmospheric, moody main riff, and uh, Ace Still's vocals are just spine-chilling. Um, Ace Still's vocals are um, pretty much, I guess, more or less black metal vocals, um, but yeah, this song is amazing. Great way to open the, um, EP, or not EP, demo. Um, the next song is called The Fog, which at first I thought was a reference to the John Carpenter movie, but apparently not. Um, yeah, this one's another great one. Probably my favorite song on here. Um, again, it has sort of like a faster, sort not faster, but like a slightly uh, more up-tempo sort of like intro bit, and then it goes into a sort of a doomy, moody riff. Um, yeah, just a really, really great song. Um, the next song is called Unholy Black Slut. This one, I believe, was one of the very few songs that sort of uh, survived the early days until later on in the band's career. Um, I think The Fog did as well, but like later on when they had their different, when they had their second vocalist, um, I believe only a few songs were still sort of uh, from the early days, like I think The Fog and Unholy Black Slut and I think Sacrifice as well. Anyway, so yeah, Unholy Black Slut is a pretty good song. I'd say it's probably my least favorite on here uh, in terms of, you know, the, the demo half. Um, it's good, but, you know, they're just song uh, the others I think are a little bit better. Um, yeah, it has uh, sort of the same sort of riffing, not same riffing, but I guess same overall formula, but done, you know, a little bit differently. Um, and then the demo half ends with the song Sacrifice, which, um, I believe was one of the very first, um, songs they actually redid with their second vocalist later on. Um, but yeah, this one's, uh, I'd say this one's probably my second favorite. Um, it probably has the most memorable riff. 
Um, it's just a very simplistic but very good riff. Kind of like with um, the rest of the songs, these riffs are very simplistic but very um, sinister and very memorable and just very sort of like moody. Um, but yeah, Sacrifice is another great song. Now, moving into the second half of this is the 1988 rehearsal tracks. Um, the first one is a rehearsal version of Unholy Black Slut, which, honestly, a lot of these rehearsal recordings have very poor audio quality and are just really a pain to listen to. Um, but yeah, this version of Unholy Black Slut, forgettable. Same thing with this next song called Voodoo Mass, which did not appear on their demo. Um, this one, again, hard to make out, very poor audio quality and just overall... Just another one to skip. Same thing with this version of The Fog. Another one, very bad audio quality. Um, the next one is a retitled version of uh, Possessed Mutants of War. Now retitled to Possessed Soldiers of War. Um, again, the audio quality is not too good. Going into Twilight Realm, another one where you can't really make out anything. Um, and then another version of Sacrifice, which is pretty much the same way. Um, then going into the second half of the rehears rehearsal recordings, somehow the audio quality actually spikes up a bit, like it gets a lot better. Um, I don't know if these were recorded in the same rehearsal, but... I mean, it says... it doesn't say any other rehearsal, so it's the same rehearsal, but for whatever reason, these last three have actually pretty decent audio quality. Um, the next song is called Distorted Birth. Um, a pretty decent song. Definitely a filler track, but, you know, it's, it's not bad. <clears throat> um, yeah, just, it's decent. Then we get to probably the worst song they ever recorded, called Chicken Dance. And, um, yeah, it, it's pretty bad. Um, this song, if you take, okay, so, this, throughout this song, there's a lot of really weird, bizarre, like, sound effects. Like, it's li literally just, like, a chicken clucking for, like, majority of the of this track. Like, it's just the sound of, like, a chicken, you know, clucking, going wild, and it's just, like, what is this? And but but here's the thing: the song would have been fine without those sound effects because the actual song itself is decent. But then they add in these really weird sound effects that just makes everything really cringy and just just stupid. Um, yeah, Chicken Dance is their worst song they ever recorded. And then the thirteenth song, the final song on here. Is actually a bonus track that wasn't actually on the original recordings of their uh, rehearsal recordings. Um, it's another version of the song Voodoo Mass, but this version is actually recorded with their second singer, uh, Chris Gaines. And this one just brings a whole new uh, uh, sorry dynamic to their uh, sound because Ace Still, their first vocalist, um, pretty much was. I guess you could just say, he was a black metal vocalist, like, his vocals are very rooted in black metal, whereas Chris Gaines, their second and final vocalist, has had pretty much a traditional death metal sound, so it brought a whole new dynamic to their sound later on, and, uh, yeah, this version of Voodoo Mass I do actually really like, mainly because, not, I mean, yeah, sure, I, uh, if Ace still had, had done vocals on this version, it would have been fine. But the reason why I like this version very much is mainly just because you're able to hear everything going on. Unlike the version of Voodoo Mass earlier on in these rehearsal re recordings, uh, the audio is very good. You can definitely hear everything, so yeah, this one's actually really good. Um, and that's what ends the album. Now, this is a very odd compilation, mainly because, yeah, well, sure, well, yes, it does contain the 87 demo and rehearsal tracks from 88. Um, the audio quality ter in terms of their rehearsal recordings fluctuates. Like, for the f most of them, for the most of the first half, the audio quality is absolute shit. 
But then you get the last three tracks, and the audio quality is actually pretty decent. Um, of course, you know, the 13th track on here, the last one, is a bonus track. Um, but, yeah. But for the first half with the 87 demo, the audio quality is actually really, really, really good. I mean, it could really, like, uh, I love the mixing on the 87 demo because, yeah, sure, you have great audio quality for the, um, everything, but it also highlights two things in particular. Um, first off, Ace Still's vocals are, like, highlighted in the mixing. Like, they're very high up, and you could hear just everything. I'm not sure it's, it's still a pretty gritty recording because it's, you know, a demo. But Ace Still's vocals are really, really good. They're not super high up in the mix, but they are high enough to where you can definitely hear them. Um, and the other thing that's high in the mix is the drumming. Especially the cymbal work. Like, the main drumming, uh, pretty, pretty average in terms of where it is in the mixing. But, for whatever reason, they highlight the cymbal work. Like, every time you hear the cymbals crash, it's a very unique sound. I don't know if it's because of the, just the way the thing is uh, mixed and uh, recorded, but the cymbals, whenever they clash, have the, it's a very sort of like harsh, sort of almost tinny sound to them, like a clattering sound rather than a, you know, your usual sound of the cymbals on the drums. But it, it's really cool. It's just the way they're mixed, I guess, makes them sound very unique. Have a very has a very unique, different sound to them. And of course, you get the riffing on here, which also is very good. But, uh, and it's very memorable, too. Um, so, before I get into the, my final thoughts and my verdict, um, I'm going to show off the artwork really quick. Now, it has a wh plain white background, and it, it's very simplistic, but I think it's very, still very good. Like, you get the uh, logo here, the Goat Lord logo, or one of the variations. Uh, I think this is one of the very early versions of this logo. Um, of course, you get... Okay, sorry, my camera lighting was freaking out for some reason. Um, don't mind that. Um, anyway, so yeah, the logo is very simplistic, but it, it, it's actually pretty good. Um, it has this... Um, I don't know how to describe this font, but other than very, um, I guess you could say, rushed. But, I mean, it's, it's not bad, but it, it does feel like they just did the uh, logo in as simplistic way as possible. Um, but, yeah, it, it's decent. Also, I really like the, that the uh, T is an upside-down cross. Um, then you get the main artwork here, which, is, again, it's very simplistic, but it, it's decent. Um, it's just basically a goat skull with its spine and, the, like, some tufts of hair right here. And then you get the... Uh, uh, demo 87 and rehearsal 88 uh, right there and then on the back you get a little bit more of course you get the track listing and then you get another uh, look at the logo which is it's slightly smaller because it can has to fit in a small space but it's pretty much uh, other than that the same version as the one over here um and then of course you get the uh, band member credits with um, right there. And then you get the uh, information, the recording information here, and here. And, um, <clears throat> this is actually a gatefold. It's a two vinyl gatefold. Um, as for the vinyl themselves, each, each of these two vinyl are a pretty cool, sort of, I guess, solid gold color. As you can see there. Um... And, uh, yeah, like I said, it's a gatefold, so it does open up. Hold on. Oh, wait, sorry. I almost put this in the wrong way. There we go. So, it, it is a gatefold. Um, it, it's pretty bare-bones basic on the inside. Um, it basically has just the silhouettes of the band members. As you can see there, um, as um, also you get the uh, you get like a quote from one of the songs, which is basically the lyrics of "Unholy Black Slut." Um, 
And uh, I guess they used this as their band quote for quite a while. Um, I don't know if you could make it out, but it says, Forever Black Dwell in Hell, which again is a reference to their one of their songs. Um, and then, you do get a poster with it though. Uh, there we go. Um, it's basically just a poster of their demo artwork. Um, which again, is simplistic, but it works very well. Um, and this, in this, uh, uh, when you get this, um, oddly enough, um, it does not come, like, the poster does not come in the sleeve, it actually is just, it just sits, uh, in the gate, in the, uh, uh op open thing, and then you just close it. Um, now, it doesn't really slide out or anything, uh, so it, 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 it's very secure. Anyway, I'm rambling. Anyway, to the actual, uh, my actual final thoughts. Um, this is really good for the first half. Like I said, the 87 demo has excellent audio quality for a demo. Um, now I wouldn't say it's as excellent as, uh, demo audio, audio quality as, like, December Moon by Morbid, but it's definitely close. It is very well, um, well mixed and very well recorded. Um, again, Ace Still's vocals are pretty much black metal vocals. The musicality is pretty much old school death metal with maybe a slight first wave black metal feel to them. Um, the riff, the riffs are probably the standout uh, uh, point for this band. Um, like I said, yeah, the drumming and the vocals are highlighted very much in the mixing of the 87 demo, but in terms of overall of this band, this band, uh, the thing that really draws you in is the riffing. The riffing is phenomenal. Uh, slightly simplistic at times, but it does do its job very, very well. Uh, Ace Still's vocals, again, like I said, are amazing. Um, and, um... As for although as for the rehearsal tracks, um, this those I don't listen to very much mainly because, like I said before, the audio quality for the re rehearsal recordings are is very 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 bad uh, for the first half. Although um, I, I do go back to the last song on here, Voodoo Mass, uh, the version that was recorded later on because and that one's pretty good, pretty good. Um, overall. For a very, um, short-lived band, they put out a pretty good debut demo, which is their highlight of their career. Now, this band did have two albums, two full lengths, but it's pretty much the same album. For whatever reason, this band put out two albums that are pretty much the exact same album, with just a slightly different mixing. So, and, and the, it's the exact same track list on both albums. Um, so that's why I don't really, I'm not really going to get those albums, because not only are they the exact same of each other, but the audio quality for each album is actually not as good as the 87 demo, believe it or not. Um, and the demos that would come later on uh, with their second singer. Um, as for this compilation album, I'm going to give it an 8 out of 10. I really, again, I really love the 87 demo, but the other half kind of is a letdown until the, the very end of the last, like, three songs. Um, but as for quintessential releases from this band, this definitely is a quintessential release. Um, I don't know how much the actual standalone 87 demo goes for, but I could, at the time I was looking up, I couldn't find... Um, the 87 demo in terms of vinyl releases other than this compilation. Um, I'm pretty sure there's a, vinyl, a standalone version of that on, a vi on vinyl somewhere out there, but at the time I was looking, I couldn't find it. Um, you, you could definitely find the 87 demo very well on um, CD, but as for vinyl, uh, this is probably your best bet. Um, yeah, um, I do really, really like this band, and Again, for anyone who wants to get into this band, definitely get this. Um, and then definitely listen to the 87 demo half. And then if you're curious, that, um, then go ahead and listen to the other half. But 
Um, yeah. So, yeah, like I said, I'm gonna give this an 8 out of 10. Um, pretty good demo. Um, kind of shitty rehearsal. Um, but yeah. Alright, so that's about it for this video. Hope you guys enjoyed, and I will see you all next time.